Hello and welcome back everyone to another video. Today I want to show you my biggest redstone creation so far. We are in snapshot 17w6a where the new concrete powder blocks were introduced. Recently Mambo did a video showing his printer where you can arrange blocks in a chest and it produces the image in the game using the new concrete powder blocks. But as he said it was a bit on the slow side, printing an image in around 16 minutes. So he challenged the community to create a smaller or faster design. The mango really pushed the limits when he published his 42 seconds design. Really great work by the way, a link to his video is in the description. And that got me thinking, how fast can you possibly go? So after days of hard work, I managed to do it in 18 seconds. There is still room for improvement, but for now I'm very pleased with the result that I managed to achieve. So without further ado, let's see it in action. Okay, now that you've seen the print in action, I'm going to explain you a little bit how the different parts of this contraption work. And you might have seen uh, the command blocks uh, over there and up there. Um, they are not necessary for the printer to work, but they just make life a bit more easy for me to uh, present the printer. So these blocks over here, they are for resetting the image. Um, where the output is, so I don't have to take the blocks out. Um, this are uh, just uh, copying the chests over there, so I don't need to uh, refill the image every time and uh, put new minecarts in the chest over there. So, um, the first part of uh, making a very fast printing system was to get the items out of this chest as fast as possible. With a normal hopper, you would need uh, about 20 seconds to empty the chest because it can take out 5 items every second. And there are 54 items in this chest, and even with 2 hoppers under the 2 parts of the chest, you would even need uh, 10 seconds to empty the chest. And with hopper minecarts, you are able to empty the chest much faster. And in order to uh, get every hopper minecart to take only one single item, so um, we can uh, separate the items by separating the minecarts. Um, I have this activator rail under the chest. So uh, when the hopper minecart uh, gets uh, down under the chest, it takes one item and then it locks and it won't take any more items. To be able to separate the minecarts after they go uh, under the chest, I have uh, this uh, railway uh, line up here where the first uh, minecart will go on this activator rail and uh, the other minecarts will uh, go around like this and so one minecart is separated from the others uh, on each of the segments. Uh, when I uh, press this button this uh, minecart dispensing station gets activated which will essentially dispense nine minecarts in a row with a, a delay of one game tick. So I have uh, this clocks who uh, dispense one uh, minecart every redstone tick on each side and they are separated with a one game tick delay with this piston. And they're going uh, 
below this chest and they are taking out one row and then uh, the minecarts are separated onto those nine tracks where they are uh, sorted so in each of the toppers there is one type of uh, concrete block and uh, depending on what type of concrete block the minecart has picked out of this chest uh, the sorting system will activate another uh, redstone wire which will dis um, set another concrete powder block to fall down. Um, I didn't have a lot of space to deal with here because I wanted the, the way for the minecart to travel to be as short as possible so they reach the destina destination very fast. So I had a 3 by one space for every sorting module and I couldn't find any sorting module uh, that was 3 by one so I designed my own, uh, which essentially works by uh, the way that all these hoppers are filled up to the brim with uh, the sort of item that is going to be sorted by this uh, segment. And if one more item goes in here in the top, uh, then the comparator activates um, this signal gets one stronger, reaches down to here, the dispenser fire, uh, no, the dropper fires and uh, makes space for another item so that the items from the top can go down and there's uh, space for another item in the top. And at the same time, uh, this line down here gets activated. Uh, in order to get the minecarts back, I drive them against this cactus and they're going down the hopper line back into the chest here in the front but since hopper minecarts break into a, sing a normal minecart and a hopper uh, I can't easily get them back into this chest here so the player would have to craft them back into normal minecarts. The next problem was uh, to get those redstone signals right next to each other so uh, they can um, power the final uh, place where the concrete powder falls down and in order to get the uh, redstone signal right next to each other I take advantage of the 15 block limit of the redstone signal. So uh, when aligned like this, uh, if I activate this one, it will only reach um, the piston at this one place and it's possible to uh, do two at the same time and so um, each combination of these inputs will result in uh, only the pistons extending that are uh, supposed to do. For the next part my first uh, idea was uh, that this redstone signal was straight linked up to pistons with uh, concrete powder in front uh, where when the piston extends the concrete powder falls down and it, it's then refilled from the back but it turns out that the refilling isn't fast enough for instance if you're printing a plain white uh, picture uh, you would have to refill 54 cent in the process of uh, printing the image and you can't do this fast enough so I needed to somehow construct a buffer so that uh, six concrete powder were already in place for the piston to push out so it doesn't have to be refilled while the printer is printing. And I came up with uh, this nice design over there, which is essentially a two high and one wide tileable design for a caterpillar engine, uh, which pushes out one block at a time on, at the front when I activate this button back here. So you can see uh, the pistons move one block forward each time I press the button and they don't interact with each other, uh, not on the side and also not on the top and the bottom, so I can really stack them. The problem with this caterpillar engines is that you have to get them back somehow and um, I figured out that when I refill it from the uh, top and push it back in, then it will reset the caterpillar engine and refill refill uh, the thing at the front at the same time. So I uh, figured out this design here, uh, which is um, when you power the redstone dust, uh, it will extend the piston at the back, uh, which is a double piston extender. And with this observer blocks, every time uh, the redstone dust 
change its, its state. So if you power it stronger or weaker, uh, it will push back uh, the block at the front here. So I can uh, fill this uh, from the back and uh, use this pistons to push back uh, the blocks inside uh, the buffer. And when I depower the redstone, it will reset and uh, retract and um, it is ready to be used again. So I've emptied this uh, white segment here at the top so I can show you uh, the finished design where when I press this button it activates the block and it uh, starts refilling uh, the center. For the refilling part in the back it's quite easy. I have these pistons here which push in the sand and if they uh, did manage to push in some more of the sand then they have to try it again uh, until they can't push in more sand then the system is full uh, then they won't push in anything the observer won't observe anything anymore and they stop pushing in the blocks. Uh, and I stacked this design 16 times and Every time uh, this piston is pushed in some sand, they have to uh, get a new sand in front of them, so uh, they are refilled from the top with this uh, piston here. And because of the 12 uh, block push limit, I had to extend this horizontal uh, lines with this nice design that Paul showed a cube hamster in a sharing is carrying episode. And it essentially manages to extend a horizontal block conveyor belt. At the top here, I made my life a bit easier with a command block because I didn't want to refill the uh, concrete powder block every time by my own. So when the block uh, vanishes over here, then it is automatically respawned. Uh, but you can theoretically in survival mode uh, just uh, pop the sand down there on your own and have enough buffer for it to print a few images. The last part of this uh, build is the station where the concrete powder is turned into the real concrete. So if uh, concrete powder falls down into this water, um, turns on this pulse extender here which unlocks this clock which uh, um, so the sticky pistons retract and uh, the normal pistons below push uh, the concrete up and this way the image is created. Okay, that's for this video, uh, thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, and uh, leave a comment if you feel like commenting. Um, I'd really like to have some new ideas for command block uh, concept, uh, contraptions, so if you have any ideas, uh, put them in the comments. Bye bye!